behold, we are going to be making tags. Now, once again, you might be thinking to yourself, um, there are a lot of tag making videos on YouTube. Okay, hear me out. These ones are different. So yes, in theory, they're tags. They're just journaling tags that you pop into like a journal envelope or pocket or tuck spot. But I've left the back completely blank because they're tags where you talk about gratitude or you talk about growth. These are very specific taskable tags. So like, for example, this one, I always make sure you put the date. And what I did was I wrote about a place where I noticed growth this last week, put a little ribbon, some stickers. My cat is meowing. I'm going to pretend I'm not here. And these ones I made after I remembered that I actually have letter stamps. So they look a little more cohesive now. That's, that's my perfectionism talking. So the two things, and maybe you can think about other w things that this acronym stands for, but talk about growth, talk about gratitude. Specifically, make a bunch of these, pull them out of your crafting stash when you can identify a moment of growth or gratitude, however big or small, and that is what you put into your junk journal, your regular journal. Maybe you hang it up on your wall somewhere really pretty. Maybe if it's a huge thing you can talk about, like if you want to talk about growth, um, like, oh, what's this one? Oh, ha, me saying I'm growing as a content creator. I think that's what I'm doing. Um, like, let's say this one is talk about growth. You could write a whole spiel on here about how you graduated from college or um, you passed your driver's ed class or something. So you're leaving yourself room to write a succinct little note to yourself, congratulating yourself for growth and for identifying moments of gratitude. All right, so I'm gonna talk about how we're gonna make this and show you where I would put these. So let's get started. All right, so to start off with, I had some pre-made tags. Um, this is literally all it was. And I used this as a template to cut down a honey bunches of votes box. That's what this is. That's, it made this many tags. It could have made more, but um, I didn't use the side panels. So I'm going to show you just on one of these guys here, what I'm gonna do with this. Obviously, I'm not gonna use this side. I would rather, I'm gonna cover both sides. So you could do this with something you'd already made. Maybe if you have, if you're someone who makes master boards, which is basically just a collage board, you could cut them down using, kind of like what I did where I took a pre-made tag and you just cut it down to size and then you have your tag that way. As long as the back side of it is plain enough that you can write on, then you're pretty much good to go. Like this is a small version of a master board that I did. This is just what I do when I play around sometimes when I have no idea what I wanna do, but I know I wanna do something crafty. Um, like, you know what, let's just use this because I'm not attached to this at all, but I can make something really neat out of it. So I want to use the bird, so I'm going to cover that. I don't know if this is straight, but it's okay if it's not. I'm going to just very carefully trace this. And I could cut around it just with scissors, but I prefer to do it with my... What do you even call these? my cutting board, I guess? I don't know. Um, I did show this in the previous video, and um, in case you're wondering, this was made out of um, a, a cardstock cover from some sort of special specialty paper. So it is a little bit thicker, but I don't have to use any particular pressure to get this to cut. The only thing to consider though, is that if you're going to use 
this cutter for thicker things, you'll probably need to replace them sooner. Because again, all it is, is this tiny little triangle of blade. But, um, and you'll know when it needs to be replaced because if you drag it along, it won't cut even, like it won't cut as um, nicely. You'll get like, like the edges will fray. I'm just going back over because for some reason I didn't cut as well as I could have. I hear a kitty cat running around. All right. So that's kind of funny. I'm I could well, I could just glue this onto one of the tags that I made previously, but this could also be its own tag as long as I put something on the back to write on because I'm obviously not going to write on the back when it's got this design on it. But let me, I'm going to ink the edges. Woo! might have actually been a little too dark for this. Okay, edges are inked. I'm gonna leave a space, I'm gonna leave this space here because I'm gonna put, let's see. I took these three stamps and I bound them together the right size. Ah, that way I don't have to worry about trying to get them to line up. I do have scraps from when I was making the tags that I could use, I suppose, but looks a little too dark. I think this is a manila, yeah, this is like a manila envelope, like folder. All right. I'm going to cut this down. I don't want it to be terribly, terribly big. So I know I don't want it to go too much bigger than that or there. So this cutter is never far away. It gets a lot of use. My husband and I went and saw um, the Dungeons and Dragons movie today. It was so good. It was so funny. Is this what I wanted? Did I want this a little bit? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It was really, really funny. I highly recommend it. There was a chubby dragon in it, and it was so ridiculous. I, I don't know much about playing Dungeons and Dragons, but apparently that was not an uncommon thing to have in the movie based on the, like, the lore. But because I wasn't expecting it, it just cracked me up. Especially because they, like, they definitely pointed it out. They were like, wait a minute, what is this obese dragon doing here? And the poor, th I don't know if I'm giving anything away. I better not say anything else, but, um, yeah, really, Karen, like, really recommend. Okay, I'm going to use the hot glue gun. I really want that to stick on there. Tags often get put in little tuck spots or envelopes, so whatever you <clears throat> put on them to decorate them, you want them to, like, you want whatever decoration is on there to be pretty, pretty stable on there. Otherwise, if you have a little bit that's easily, like, like, I don't, actually, I don't think I have anything on this one. But if there's an edge that's going to pop up, it's going to happen when you're, like, putting it into a tuck spot. There's, I feel like there's something missing, but before I do anything else, I'm going to punch the hole in there. So that I know about where I need to 
I just need to know like what the edges of that are so I don't put anything up against it. Hmm. What is missing from this? Maybe a sticker? I don't want to get too dependent on using stickers because I feel like sometimes they just take away from all the other work that you do, if that makes sense. Like you're, you're putting all this effort into putting all these bits and bobs together and then you just stick a sticker on there that um, it sometimes kind of takes precedence over the other stuff. Oh my goodness. Do I really not have anything that would go with this? Definitely not the Christmas stickers. I don't know what to do with this weird sticker. I've got that one. I'm pretty sure it came from the antiquarian um, sticker book. Definitely not that, that's huge. But it doesn't go with that. Does this go? Is this too big? Yeah. This is so cute. Like a little, seems good. You can put it on its side and give it a little bit of a interest. Oh, little coral. Maybe a leaf. Yeah, I don't know why. I think I think I needed something to frame this bird. Okay, so burb framed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 See you. Now we need to tackle the back. Do I want to use one of those? Maybe not. Maybe? I could. It'll be a really thick piece. What are you? I could even just use the back of a regular piece of paper or like sometimes you get paper packs and you just it like whatever you see on there doesn't resonate like a design just doesn't resonate and you can't figure out how you would ever use it what is this doing here wait what did I put it away yes I did yeah <laughs> yeah Now that I've put green in there, I think green would look good. So let's, let me look through here and see. I have a lot of these paint samples because I we just painted our new house. I've, oh my gosh, we had to do so much work to this house. I made this signature the other day, but it was an example and I didn't really plan on using it for anything in particular, so there we go. Okay. What you can't see is that that green paper I chose, 1000% would not stick to this. I made like a whole five minute bit about trying to trying to use it and it did not work. I'm gonna try this paper instead. It's a heavier cardstock paper that I have and one side of it has texture to it. So I would like to think it will stick better. 
I really hope so, because that was just bizarre. I also somehow managed to, like, trace it incorrectly and cut it wrong. I don't know how that was possible, given that I traced around it directly. Okay, so it barely had any glue left on it, but that helped me to keep it in place. My fellow left-handed folk, you know what's really funny is eventually I did try lefty scissors and I just, I can't figure out how to use them. Like it makes no sense to me because the blades are in different places. They sit on, they sit differently on the handle, if that makes sense. Okay, hold on a second. And it wasn't until I started doing more paper crafting and doing like fussy cuts that I got much better at cutting things out. Cause I think I was always trying to figure out what, because I'm left-handed, I'm like, do I look at this side of, this, of the blade or this one? And I just never quite, I don't know. When I was in fifth grade, I did have a teacher who tried to unteach me how to write left-handed, and I'm like, lady, the brain has already developed those pathways. That, that don't make no sense. All right. Pray for me. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Oh boy, that's hot. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I'll leave that for a second while I take a sip of tea. <sighs> this is my teacup, kitty cat. And I'm drinking jasmine tea, okay. Did it work? Kind of. What goes on? <laughs> Why won't anything stick to this cardboard? It must be because it's got a finish to it. It's got like a glossy finish to it. It worked a lot better this time though. So I'm gonna see what I can do about the edges because that's where it's not really working. I might have to use washi tape to really make sure it all stays down. Or at the very least, y'all can see this in action and I might not ever use it for myself because Sometimes that's what happens. You have to accept that like you worked hard on something and you en you have to enjoy that you, like the, the process rather than the outcome. Like I, I learned that apparently I need to not use that particular type of paper. However, it does seem okay now. Um, I'm gonna punch through the other side. Did that work? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, all right. Here's the thing too, you don't have to actually punch through if you don't want to. You can take a piece of lace or fabric and, or even just paper, cheesecloth. I need to get some cheesecloth. I've seen some really neat crafts done with cheesecloth and you could easily just like staple it or pin it right here. In fact, I have some really beautiful um, brads that have jewels in the center and um, that's what you could do this for. That way you have something to hold on to to pull it out of a tuck spot or um, a pocket. But I cut a hole in it, so that's what that is gonna be. I'll show you that alternative option next. Let's put the ribbon through. This is my favorite <laughs> ribbon um, that I get from the dollar store. It's always there in the section where they have like vases and that kind of thing. It's really nice. I think you would consider this to be crocheted actually. It's crocheted ribbon. They always seem to have it in stock and I've used it for so many projects. So just did a little slip knot there and fed it through. And because we used 
cardboard, like chipboard, I think is another way you call it. Um, when I put this through, the hole is not going anywhere. Like it's, it's good to go. I'm going to finish this one off with some of the Distress Ink. leaving as much space as possible for me to write on. Um, and you know, it always sounds so obvious, but you don't have to write on it vertically just because the front is vertical. You could take up way more real estate if you wrote horizontally on these. So that's an option as well. These could be really cute if you had one of those clip magnets that you um, put on your fridge. Maybe there's something that you really wanna share with your family or your partner like, look at my tag, my thoughts about growth or gratitude. Maybe because you wrote something about your partner and you really wanted to make it um, kind of a statement piece that, you, you know, something you put on the fridge. So instead of making a slip knot, I could have just, you know, put it through, um, you know, made a little loop and hung it on a magnet or clipped it onto a magnet or something like that. So it could also just be a piece of art, not just something that gets put away in your journal. This is my personal journal. Actually, it's, this is one of like 15, I swear. Um, and honestly, I haven't written in this one in a little while. I have a more spiritual based journal that I tend to write in, but like, here's a tag. These are both tags. I don't know, maybe I should make this one into a tag about gratefulness or something. There's Alice, my favorite, one of my favorite fictional characters. So this, this is a tuck spot or an envelope spot that I could use. But you see that this one is starting to come apart. And when I started putting it in there, it got caught. So that's why you really want to make sure whatever you add to these tags is not going to come apart, come out. So right there, could be right there but that one's kind of full. What's in here? A oh, my wedding task list from back in the day. Why I keep that, I don't know, probably just to show myself how far I came. Um, like here's a tuck spot. Oh boy. Blah, blah, blah. Behold, a clever pocket. Oh man, we should maybe, I could do a flip through just of, just of my journal. I think it does doggo. There's my husband with our guinea pigs. Okay, now I'm gonna get distracted. Here's the bookmark. And then we do a little baba. The little, we actually have a rabbit that looks just like that. Okay. Actually, the last time I wrote in this was the 15th and of uh, February of this year, and I wrote a whole list of things I had been accomplishing, which all could be the kinds of things that I was would also write about in a tag. Let me see if I have a pre-made envelope or a tuck spot in here I can show you. There's one signature. I'm definitely going to have to do a flip through or another tutorial about how you make these kinds of journals because this one is not a pamphlet stitch. These signatures can all be removed. And see, I didn't embellish this one too much because I knew I wanted to do more embellishment along the way. So it's a lot of paper that had a lot of potential. Okay, actually, this is an envelope and a tuck spot behind it because I didn't put the back of it down. So I could easily just go tag. And then because I put the little bitties on there, you can see it when, when it's open or shut, which I think is a very fun look. And this can live in there with it. And I believe this is, yeah, this is a copy of my marriage certificate. I was like, where else am I gonna put it? Here we are. 
And it's funny too, because when you make these regularly and you tuck them away, you kind of, you don't forget about them. I remember they're there, but it's fun to look back on it later and be like, ooh, I remember this one. So it's a little surprise for yourself. Okay. So there's my journal. That's how you would use one of these tags, talking about gratefulness, talking about gratitude. Give these to other people too. If you catch someone else doing something amazing that you think needs some recognition, if you have a whole pile of these, you could be like, ooh, this is for my friend so-and-so. I'm gonna write a little thing. And like, can you imagine how fun it would be if you like stuck this somewhere, like maybe in one of their coat pockets and they didn't know it was there. And they were like, oh, what is this? And it's a little note about gratitude or like, I've seen you grow in this way and I'm really proud. That would just make someone's day, I think. So I hope that this encouraged you to make something really neat, give a new life to a craft you might already do. And um, if you think you know someone who would benefit from this kind of content, please make sure that you send the link to this video their way. Share, subscribe, like. I am trying to get this kind of content out to as many people as possible, spreading the word about wellness, love, mental health. Let's destigmatize mental health and self-care. And I hope that you enjoyed. And I will be back soon when my AliExpress order comes in finally and we get to play with that stuff. All right, take good care.